and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. And today, I hope you're back for part two, it is time to make an 1860s corset. Now, again, after the whole chemise debacle in the last video, I will pop a card up here where I made a chemise from an original 1860s pattern. I was ready just to sew something and not have to deal with drafting and fitting and yada yada. I'm at the end of my first year of graduate school and I just needed a project that I could turn out in a day or two. So I made the red threaded 1860s corset. I also bought their kit to make the corset, um, which you can find on their website, which I will link down below. I'm more gonna focus on the mistakes I made making this corset as well as some, some of the decision making and finishing techniques that I used that were outside of the pattern's instructions because that's far more interesting. I used the red threaded pattern partially because red threaded fits me super well. I don't have to do alterations or anything to their patterns. I've never had an issue with fit. This is actually their Regency Shorts Days I'm wearing right now. They come together super easily and if you know historical techniques, then you can sort of adapt their patterns into a more historical construction method, which I have done on several occasions. I do have some like original 1860s corset patterns in my bookshelf over here, but frankly I had never made a split busk corset before and I really wanted to sort of road test my skills on something that was a bit more closed loop and not so open-ended. Additionally, when you're working with patterns taken off extant garments, they're fit to that specific body of the person that wore them and there's often a lot more finagling in terms of fit because no two bodies are the same. So I've just decided to take the bit of a shortcut and do the red threaded corset. I think it came out really beautifully. If you watch my Madame de Pompadour stays video, link in the cards as well, um, you will recognize the fabric because it is the same fabric that I used um, for that as well. I had just enough for this corset. I did have to use twill tape for the binding though because I didn't quite have enough fabric to make bias tape, but otherwise I really like the finished product and I hope you enjoy watching this process of making them. All right, time to construct this corset. So I am using a corset kit and pattern from Red Threaded. This is their 1860s corset and throughout this I'm going to talk about sort of the changes that I made to this pattern and not necessarily the nitty-gritty of constructing it because frankly if you buy the pattern you will get the instructions that they uh, recommend that you do. I did make some changes to sort of help with a bit of historical accuracy but also just to make it work for the materials that I was using. So I then cut out the pattern both with the cotton cotille that was in the kit and then also a beautiful peach silk jacquard that I had in my stash. If you are a viewer of this channel, you will know that I used this on a set of stays earlier in the year. And then, of course, I made my first mistake, which was that I marked the boning channels and then decided to cut out the boning casing immediately, not realizing that I had done it very wrong. So you will see some interesting choices happening later on in terms of boning casing. I then inserted the split busk in the general manner split busks are inserted. Of course I did this upside down originally so I had to rip it out and try again. Good thing I just did it with the clasps and not with the pegs. So you know you sew the facing on, skipping the parts where the pegs or skipping the parts where the little claspy things are going to come out. And um, then you then you wedge it in there and sew around it. Put it up next to the peg side. You mark where the pegs are gonna go. You stab it with an awl a couple of times, you slot the pegs through, sew around it, call it a day.
there are a lot of videos on YouTube that detail this process more in depth if you are interested. I also added the waist tape at this time as well. I then used some of the twill tape to cover the raw edges and to make that first boning channel and then I cut open the slits and inserted the gussets at the front. For this, of course, I just turned in the seam allowance on the corset, slipped the, the gusset in, and then sewed two layers of taut stitching around it. I then at this point sewed on the boning casing in full force, not all of it, you will see again the long channels I had to improvise on. And then here's probably the biggest difference between the red threaded instructions and what I did was how I actually attached the pieces together. I constructed the seam by ironing in the seam allowance on one piece of the corset and then lapping that over the seam allowance of the other seam. I then used two rows of top stitching to secure the seam. This worked well because it's a very flat seam but it's also a very strong seam and I would recommend it if you are looking to construct this garment or something similar. And I also used this method on the hip gores and on the lacing strip attachment. The hip gores was a little bit more tricky because I did have to clip the curves of the seam, but it ended up looking great. At this point, I ended up placing the long boning channels that extend from the top of the corset to the bottom of the hip gore. For this, I had to use some linen tape I had in my stash because as we mentioned previously, I uh, messed up at the beginning. And I also sewed these over the waist tape, which I had basted in place. Somehow the waist tape did not come out super even, but I think it's fine. As you can tell, I am, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to these things. I then boned the corset with both the steel boning that was given to me. However, for some reason, I don't know if it was me or if it was the kit, but the steel boning, the length didn't quite make sense. They were a little long. So I ended up using some th synthetic whalebone that I also had in my stash. And then of course I marked and set the grommets for the corset. Um, I used double zero silver steel grommets for this. They are the most historically accurate grommets that you can buy on the market at the moment. And I annoyed all my neighbors by just pounding away for a good 20 minutes. I'm surprised they did not come and yell at me. I then bound the corset with that same twill tape you've been seeing, this is a beautiful peach cotton twill tape, which I've had in my stash for a while. You know, I always buy different colors of twill tape, trying to figure out what's going to work with my project. I ended up buying like four twill tapes for one project, and surprisingly, this matched so well for this project. So that was great. Could used a lot of stash materials for this project, actually. And then of course, everyone's favorite part of making a corset, I reinforced the bottom of the gussets and also flossed the corset with this beautiful corresponding pink silk buttonhole twist. I love a good flossing on a corset and it also helps the bones from sliding around into the twill tape, which is not super strong and just sort of looks really elegant and beautiful. And after that, I laced up the lacing which was provided in the kit and she was finished.
right, so in terms of the corset, it's wrap up time. I love this thing. I love this corset. So this is, as we've talked about this entire video, red threaded pattern. And the thing about red threaded patterns is they just fit me really well. They're just, they're my proportion. It's nice. It's nice not to have to make any changes. So I love this fabric. I think it hides a lot of sins in terms of the fact that this is not particularly my best sewing ever. This was my first time making a support garment. It's my first time making a split bust corset for one thing, and it was my first time ever doing it on machine. I normally do these things by hand, so I think it turned out really well. Obviously, as you saw in the video previous to this, I <laughs> made some mistakes in terms of cutting out boating channels and stuff. So it's a little piecemeal on the inside, but everything is, you know, finished and the seams are all tucked away and everything. But I think it looks great. Just love the shape. It's really gorgeous. Uh, I just want to lounge around my house with this thing on all the time. It's so comfy. I, I'm a weirdo. I like wearing corsets a lot because I actually scoliosis when I was a kid. Not super bad, but I had to wear a brace for like a year or so. It's just, it's comforting to me. And I love, the thing about I, I love too is that it works so well with the chemise. So the chemise just like, you know, my bust is obviously lifting up and the chemise is sort of just like covering and controlling the top of the bust. So like nothing's falling out. Oh, ah, I just love it. Can't wait to make the dress that goes over it. So if you would like to see me making the dress that goes over it, you're welcome to click down below and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, both a costume and conservation, where I share bits and pieces of my sewing projects as well as other things dress related that are going on around here. Um, if you don't wanna do none of that, that's completely fine. I just hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.